how are you controlling it yeah I, I mean it's an interesting question and i every time i you know have to do continuing med medical education or do a a renewal of a license there's a whole opioid educational you know curriculum and uh, it's interesting because i've operated uh, in 2026, it'll be 30 years that I've been operating. And we've always used sh short-term uh, narcotics as a way to treat you know, surgical pain. What I do is called an ERAS. So it's early recovery after surgery. And it's a combination of ondesterone for nausea, an anti-inflammatory, and you can sub in different anti-inflammatories. One's used uh, routinely are celecoxib or naproxen, and you can choose whatever. Um, the other thing you want to do is control for neuropathic symptoms because neuropathic pains are really a uh, difficult problem for patients. And if not um, appropriately addressed, and, and we try to do everything up front, we don't try to respond to it after it's already happened because that it's more problematic. So we treat uh, all of our patients up front with a, a dose of gabapentin or pregabalin and then post-op. There is narcotic available if needed, but intra-op, so during the procedure, um, nerve blocks are done with uh, a combo of short-acting and long-acting local anesthetics. So we use different combinations, like anesthesia does specific uh, nerve blocks with ropivacaine, and then we do specific nerve blocks with a combination of uh, of basically regular marcaine and then liposomal. So the, the short answer is I don't do anything as I was taught. I do everything to avoid what you're describing, which is problems with post-op. So it's almost universally unheard of for me to have people ask for more pain medicine. And if they do, then we have to be uh, alert to like that somebody with a metabolism issue because it's 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 very rare that I would have somebody, you know, have an addiction type issue.